If you're like many elected or appointed officials, you probably see your role first and foremost as being a policymaker, as someone who brings their own ideas and perspectives to your board's or council's discussions of the important policy issues facing your community. In this role, you advocate for your own views, you lobby your fellow elected officials, and are lobbied by citizens, and you even research and develop your own ideas on policy issues. In short, in this role, you do the things that legislators do. But being a legislator is only part of the job. At other times, you and your fellow board or council members make decisions affecting the property rights of individual applicants. And this role requires you to conduct yourself like a judge. In this role, you are making what the law calls quasi-judicial decisions, where you have an obligation to ensure due process. You must conduct yourself according to the constitutional requirement that, quote, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of the law. What does this mean specifically for you? You must act like a judge and do the things that judges would do and not do the things that judges wouldn't do. What happened to my coffee? To help avoid due process liability risk for you and your entity, you must follow these quasi-judicial rules of engagement. Don't make up your mind before the board or council hearing on the application. Just like a judge, your obligation in a quasi-judicial proceeding is to decide the case through your council or board's deliberation based on the evidence presented to you at the hearing. Don't make prejudicial pre-hearing statements. Just like a judge, you should not announce how you would vote on an application or make comments for or against an application before you've heard the evidence. Oh man, Carol, have you seen this application? <laughs> I will never approve this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't engage in any communications with interested parties outside of your board or council hearing. These are called ex parte communications, and engaging in them can be a sure path to having the integrity of your process questioned and your decision challenged. Hey, Councilman Jones. Yeah, what you told me last week was absolutely right. Everyone I'm hearing from hates these applications. <laughs> Everyone. I told my mailman. <laughs> he hates it. <laughs> Insurance claim? That's gonna cost you. Don't participate in a quasi-judicial proceeding in which you have a financial or personal interest in the outcome. If you have a conflict of interest in a matter pending before your board or council, you need to declare your conflict and recuse yourself from the discussion and vote. If these condos get built, it will ruin the view from my wife and I's master bedroom. I gotta make sure these things never get approved. Also, don't be a witness in your own quasi-judicial proceeding. Instead, have the parties provide your board or council with information during the hearing. Remember, as the judge in a quasi-judicial proceeding, your job is to consider the evidence and testimony that others present to you, but you should not be offering your own evidence. I actually photoshopped what I think it will look like if they build them, and I hate it. Here, I'll email it to you. Yeah, I did that myself. No, I don't want to see the buildings. I want to see the mountains. I want to see the deer feeding and the streams. That's illegal procedure. The due process rules of engagement can be complicated and can sometimes seem at odds with the general expectation that you or your citizens may have about interacting with elected and appointed officials. But following these rules of engagement is critically important to ensure fair process and avoid the risk of a due process claim. Make sure you get further training on how you are to conduct yourself in relation to quasi-judicial proceedings as liability consequences for mistakes in this arena can be dire.